picking it out. And you know, another thing besides writing the song, was it Glenn and Les? Did they want you to perform it? Also, I, I all I heard were we wrote the song, we handed it over, and I can't. I don't remember because my esteemed co-writer, who would never let me touch the lyric books, lost them. No. So, you know, I can't tell. I am curious myself. I want to know when that song was written. I want to know where Mercury was in the... She's lost. You know, I couldn't touch them. You know, I, I was going to lose them. I was, yeah, so hopefully she'll find them. Not like, But anyway, so I'm not sure of the exact time frame, but many, many months went by, and I just got a call saying, you have to come out to California tomorrow and record this song. I don't know exactly what happened, but I heard that there were two very well-defined camps of people. One, one group wanted me to sing it because they loved my demo. And the other group wanted to get somebody famous to sing it because nobody on Cheers was famous. Nobody knew Shelley Long. Nobody knew Ted Danson. Nobody knew this, this show was just completely unknown. So they felt at least let's get somebody famous to sing the theme song. And I heard all kinds of rumors from Kenny Rogers to who, I don't know who, but the bottom line is, I don't know exactly what happened, but I just know I got a call. You know, you have to come out here tomorrow and record this. I had pretty much maybe forgotten about it, recording it. So I don't know exactly what happened, but I wouldn't be surprised if it was Glenn and Les Strauss because they didn't care if somebody was famous. They, they could have cast famous actors yeah. if they wanted to. No, they cared about who spoke their words the best, who had chemistry with one another when they cast that show. And when they hired us, that's what they cared about. So I, I would bet anything that probably like the network probably wanted to get somebody, maybe NBC probably wanted to get somebody famous. And, and Glenn and Les Charles probably used whatever power they had to, uh, but it clearly went down to the wire because it was just a few weeks before the show went on that I went and. Oh, <laughs> yeah, no pressure. Was, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Maybe it's better that I didn't know that it was coming. It happened really, really quickly. And, um, and I didn't know any of the musicians. I was, you know, I'm a New Yorker. I was in Los Angeles. I didn't know any of the other musicians. I walked into a completely foreign situation on a huge sound stage at Paramount Pictures, you know, big enough for orchestras. They could record, you know, Star Wars or and mm. there's just like four of us in this massive, massive stage. And uh it was it was a little overwhelming. But of course I thought this show would run one episode and fail. No one was ever going to hear it. You know, I didn't have that pressure on me at all. You know, otherwise forget it. Mm -hmm. But it was just a, you know, pilot. Well, they had, they had a 13 episode commitment, but it was just a new show. Yeah. And most new shows fail. Yeah. You know. So that was my singing experience. Well, you nailed it. It seems like another lifetime ago, though. I bet. But I did. I knew. I did know that. It's a good vocal. You it's did. a good vocal. <laughs> oh yeah. And who's doing the backup on that? Just some session. Yeah. I. I, Me. I wondered I about did. that. Yeah, I did all the parts. Wow. You know, I, they when they flew me out there, they just said they just said, duplicate your demo. You know, just the demo was piano vocal, but they just said, you know. With the, with the whatever band, just do whatever you did. So I just did exactly what I did on the uh, demo. And then I was taken into some lady's office in the music department at Paramount Pictures. And she had this, she had the track sheet in front of her. She's like, what did you do? <laughs> There's like 10 vocal tracks. I said, I did what I was at well, there's no way we can pay you for all these vocal tracks. I said, well, I did what I was asked to do. I wasn't padding the vocal. I just, you know, I was 
So um, again, 25 years old, she, she got her calculator. And she said, this is the best we can do. I didn't know. I didn't have an agent. I didn't have a manager. I didn't know that I was now a member of the Screen Actors Guild and they would have gone to fight for me tooth and nail. They are the best union. I didn't know any of that. So I said, okay. And so my, my singing fees forever were locked in, in that woman's office. <laughs> Apparently, you know what I mean? And look, and I, she did pay me for like six. I mean, I've done really, really well on those vocals, especially if it's in an Applebee's commercial. But mm-hmm. what I'm saying is that um, I did not get what I did. I didn't get paid for what I did. And you don't realize that most things that we do in this business don't have long-term implications because nobody gives a, you know, yeah. I wrote the song, who cares? I sang this, who cares? You don't know when it's the one time when it's going to have implications forever. Right. So I always tell people, you know, protect yourself because you don't know when this what seems like the smallest of something is going to turn out to be the biggest of something yeah that doesn't happen every day and you don't always get a redo so you know always i I always tell people to always stick up for themselves always they have to get somebody to you know represent them or never assume that it doesn't matter because you're giving away nothing because you could be giving way you know so much 